four exhibitions that were curated in by Ashley James, who is Associate Curator of Contemporary Art at the Guggenheim Museum in New York City. And so we, you know, he's one among um, very few that were selected and we're just really excited to talk to you about your work tonight, to hear about what you've been up to since you created the work that's on the walls here. And um, just to tell people a little bit about what informs what's here. So when they come, they can kind of get, get a sense of where you were coming from when you made this. Absolutely. So with that, I give you ransom. Oh, hi, how are you doing everyone? Hi, Joanna. Hi. Um, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure to, um, to be here, you know, uh, especially um, the Barrett Art Center. I have a long history with Barrett. Um, it was um, the place that I discovered and really made me feel at home when I first moved to um, Dutchess County. You know, um, I was moving from um, New Jersey to, um, to Poughkeepsie and my biggest fear was art community. Oh my goodness, I couldn't go to the Art Students League. I couldn't go to, you know, these other places to draw from life or to meet artists. And when I discovered the Bar Barrett Art Center, which was literally in walking distance from where I moved, it was just great. Um, so I quickly started going and um, Sam Rines, uh, who a room is named after there. And, um, you know, we were, we were all met on Tuesdays as a small group and we drew and we, that was fun. I got to meet and really sort of discover all the wonderful artists in Hudson Valley. So it's really a pleasure to be back here. Great, thank you. Well, thanks for being with us. So um, I will, I'm not quite sure what you have prepared for us tonight, if there's anything you want to set up. Um, I had not prepared. I just thought that you had um, questions. Um, I can oh, you. I, I absolutely have questions. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ready to answer questions to talk about the work. Um, you know, I'm, I'm ready, so. <laughs> awesome. So you start this work, you kind of preface all of the viewers coming into the space um, with a, a a quote from James Baldwin and a little bit of your reflection on it. And I was hoping you could kind of tie people who haven't seen the work yet, who may have seen a few of the images on Barrett's website or in Chronogram Magazine or in the Poughkeepsie Journal um, to tell us a little bit about how James Baldwin and your experience fit with what's on the walls here today. Well, you know, James Baldwin is just such a special um, person, you know, um, writer, um, you know, activist. And when he, he left America and, you know, went to France because he was frustrated. And when he was in France, he um, wrote um, an essay um, called the, the View From Here, which is basically him making commentary on being outside of America and looking at what was happening in America in the 1960s with all the protests. So in a lot of ways, I feel connected to him because I live in Rhinebeck. You know, um, there's no major protest happening here. Um, for the most part, it's a um, very sort of liberal sort of community. And I'm watching these things that are happening on my television, you know, internet, social media, et cetera. And so the, the paintings really are sort of um, a reaction to uh, me living some living outside of those activities and seeing what's going on. Um, and what I do also is I sort of tie it to my history. Um, um, there's a connection between the two because I think, you know, like he says in the essay, um, history is current. And so um, that's sort of the connection between um, his essay, uh, my work and his essay. So um, in your work, you're, you just talked about um, the 1960s and mm -hmm in your life and in your reference, your like artwork that you reference when you think about what you do, how does that other work in terms of the art world factor into what you do? What, I mean, do you think about that time as artistically in a different way than you think about it socially? Well, well yeah, I mean, you know, the black art movement sort of started at that time, um, probably a little bit after, so the early, well, late sixties, early seventies, which sort of comes from that time. And you know, um, I'm a child during that time. I'm growing up um, during that time. And the artists who um, who came from that movement, um, who were young artists at that time, have made a big influence on my work. Um, Kerry James Marshall would be a good example, um, and other um, uh, other artists as well. 
but so it, it's sort of, you know, coming from that and then the fact that, you know, here we are again with protests, Black Lives Matter, you know, all these things are happening again. So it's almost like we're sort of, there's a pattern and there's a, you know, we're sort of going back and looking back and that sort of connection. But also, you know, that's one of the reasons why in a lot of my abstract work, I use patterns because this whole idea of things repeating over and over again and using patterns in my artwork, that's um, an important element um, for me. So um, yeah, that's, you know, that's all um, part of the work. Um, and there's, there's so many other wonderful artists that came from that period, as well as galleries and sort of the, the blossoming of Black artists sort of saying, um, I'm making statements and fighting for, not, well, actually, yeah, that's usually work fighting, fighting for to be exhibited into different places as, as well. And, you know, they broke, they broke open doors for people like myself. And so I really um, owe them a debt of um and that and that reflects that hopefully in the work well definitely i think um and the the phrase i think is uh standing on the shoulders of giants that's you know is, is not uh is not untrue for you know the way that that your work has and all, all everyone's work you know sure. does does that in a way um so when you were talking about pattern, I have a question. Um, anyone who's looked at the works online or come to the gallery and seen them, they there are lots of references to quilts, um, whether they be abstract or you know more representational. And I wonder what came first for you, an interest in pattern or an interest in quilts and then realizing that they made you think about pattern or vice versa? I think the quilts came first, the quilts. Um, when I, um, in the 80s, um, late 80s, when I discovered the women of G's Bend and what they had been doing since the turn of the century, um, um, I was just amazed. And I grew up with my grandmother who quilted from time to time. I, I wouldn't put her in the same category as one of those women from G's Bend. Um, if she lived in a community where there were more people who are sort of social and, and made it um, a thing, maybe she would have done more. But I, um, it's just something about the, the beauty of what they have created. And they're creating um, some of their best work, you know, during the 1940s and 50s, um, you know, when we have the abstract, abstract expressionists who are in New York also creating beautiful abstract works, which I love. So it's sort of a combination of those two things. But these are, you know, untrained artists, you know, never went to art school. Um, and they're just doing amazing things with colors and patterns. You know, and um, I, I, those patterns probably brought me into collaging because you can paint those. They're very time consuming. It, sometimes you have to sort of, you know, you have to really get detailed. And that, I, that sort of detail is not what I'm really interested in my work. So it became easier to cut out a pattern and, and glue it down rather than to paint that pattern. And um, it made it more interesting. It, and it brought it back to sort of a graphic feeling, which I also like. So um, those are all the sort of things that sort of just get me really excited about making work. Um, and that those quilt patterns will always remain in my work. Um, and I'm looking forward to expanding them. I just have, I have some interesting ideas about how to use them. Oh gosh, we have something to look forward to. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm actually going to ask a, a question from the um, from one of our watchers <laughs> at home. I would say listeners at home, but that's I've been listening to NPR too much. Um, so someone was interested in the your sub work on the subway um, yeah. at the yeah. number seven train. Yeah. Well, it actually was on a few different trains. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I did. Um, I did a poster for the subway system. Um, it just happens that um, the person who um, ran the program has a home in the Hudson Valley and um, would take the, you know, Metro North and then um, get transportation to go to her home and want to always do something about the Hudson Valley because uh, it actually is a subway stop. I mean, it's a subway train, a part of Metro North system. And this is the furthest it goes north. Um, so they asked me to um, create an image um, that sort of was built around the Hudson, um, Hudson Valley and the Hudson River and all those things. And I did an image and it was great for a full year um, they put your image on an entire train. So it's not just a car on that tra seven train, an entire train has your images on it. Um, and it was great getting um, emails and you know text messages from friends who 
saw it on a train and they, they take pictures with it and all those things. So it was a great, great year. Yeah. That's, that's a phenomenal. So is that a project of the Metro North? It is, it is. Yeah, yeah. And uh, an artists who are interested in doing public work, they should know that you can go to their, um, their website and they always have these calls. Um, some I've applied for, I would love to do a subway station. That to me would be a real honor. And you can apply, you can submit your work and see if they uh, is selected for um, a number of different sort of um, ways they sort of work with artists, which is wonderful, public art. They, they really do support it for the subway system. I, I hope the cuts that you hear about, I hope they don't affect that program because it's really wonderful for artists. And, and they keep the work though. That's something you should be aware of. They get to keep the work. So I could say I'm in a collection with, you know, Romare Beard and some other wonderful artists, if, technically. <laughs> so they tech, I think they do have a museum. That's how they're, they're categorized yeah. that as part yeah. of their museum. That, well, that's a great to be part of that collection. Yeah. I actually, um, that uh, you mentioning collectors um, mm -hmm. brings me to just want to hear a little bit more about um, your work that's on the cover of our um, postcard and that's what is featured on our website um, mm -hmm. entitled Who Should Own Black Art? Mm -hmm. And um, I, there is, a, you know, immediately what that is about, I would love to hear from you and I think people would like to know. And, and also um, I do have a, a question about like the collecting world and what's happening right now in terms of black art um, and being collect and collectors um, and, if you have any thoughts about that and the, the gallery scene in New York sure. City. Uh, a little, not much uh, about the gallery scene. This is, um, I'm sort of um, a newbie into the gallery scene. Um, you know, that painting is, um, the idea came to me because I was listening to um, Kerry James Marshall, who I'm a huge fan of. Um, him, um, a number of his talks, he, and sometimes he would casually talk about buying black artwork. And he would say that anyone can buy it is what his answers usually is. And he sort of jokingly says, you know, you can lay it away, you know, um, just like you can, you know, clothes or something at a department store. And so that I, it, you know, and, and there's a lot of truth to that. You can, I mean, you go to any gallery, see a work of art and put a down payment on it. But Kerry's work is really expensive. <laughs> you know, it costs millions of dollars. And so this idea just kept swirling around in my head at this, this sort of debate and, and then reading articles about, you know, who has a right to own black art? Can black, you know, black people often feel they can't afford it because it's so expensive. And he even talks about the fact that certain football players and athletes have bought pieces from him. So the idea came to me, well, what if someone from the South, and there's a painting um, um, when frustration threatens desire, which is one of my favorites of his, it's about Black culture in the South. So I said, well, what if a, a Black family in the South, which that painting, bought that painting because it was something they connected to. And they actually did what Kerry suggested. They went in, they put down maybe a, a hundred dollars or fifty dollars and they worked every week and they put paid off a little bit every week. And so the painting really is about them bringing the painting home. So now it's in their home and they're proudly posing in front of their Kerry James Marshall painting, which sort of, you know, brings up that question, you know, could this really happen? They're obviously in a very sort of um, modest, low income sort of home. Um, and they, they, they have an interest in art. And if you look at the very, very far corner on the right hand side, there's a small um, painting there of a, of, um, of a model posing, a painting that I did at Barrett actually, which is interesting. And and that's part of the collection also. So I'm sort of suggesting that they, they have bought art before, but in a very modest way. And now they've made their big purchase and saving their money and getting a Kerry James Marshall. And it just brings up those questions about, you know, who should, how can they, all those things. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so I wonder if this is, I'm just thinking part of this work is part of your recent masters. Um, yeah. And having had this experience, is this the kind of conversation that is this, this conversation something that's new, newer to your discussions now that you're in grad school than when you were in school before? Yes, um, th that's actually a big question people always ask, you know, why'd you go back um, to get your master's? Um, you know, I, I taught without a master's, I was tenured without a master's, um, mainly because at Syracuse, in the 
be, when I got there, it was based on your sort of portfolio and not if you had a degree or not. And so I was able to get in without having a master's. But I went back to get my master's because I want the scholarship. I, I really wanted to take some time and understand studio art um, and write those papers and think about what I wanted to do, examine myself, examine my voice, um, all those things, which I, I just never gave the proper amount of time. And also, I didn't know always where to go. You know, that's what's wonderful about, you know, um, a program. And the program is a low res program, which is wonderful because I get to sort of work here in my studio and I go on campus um, twice a year when, before we were closed down. And um, there I met, you know, meet all types of artists um, to doing all types of work and wonderful professors. Um, actually, two of those professors happened to live here in Rhinebeck, which is odd and funny. <laughs> but um, it was really one, it's really a great, wonderful program, you know, um, and it gave me a chance to read all those books that were in my studio that I have um, have never read before and to look at artists and think about, you know, my voice and what contribution I want to make. Yeah, I think that's that's a luxury in a way to to have that that opportunity at this point. I mean, and you can do that now that you've yeah, come yeah, to this point. Yeah, yeah. Well, low, low res really helped a lot. You know, I, I would be very difficult to sort of drop out, and not do anything, and just be in in a, a, a grad program for two years. But you know, being on campus twice a year, writing here in my studio, and uh, working here in my studio really helped a lot. And you know, we also keep in contact with. All the social media things, me, myself, and the other classmates. Um, but it really, you know, I mean, the timing was perfect. Um, you know, um, discovering the program in, in my in the timing of my life, so I was ready for it. Well, I I think that it, it probably um, you appreciate it in a different way than you would have a few oh, years. Ago. <laughs> that that is so important. That's that's really such a um, a wonderful statement that you just made. Because 10 years ago, I wasn't ready. Um, it, I, I, I've gone through a lot of different things um, and thinking, but it was really um, a good time and opportunity for me because I, I was starting to just see things differently. And, and that really helped a lot. Um, I, I, there wasn't um, a lot of questioning about how I worked and things like that. It was just really ideal timing um, for my age, my maturity also, that, that's part of it. I, I would have been a, such a different artist um, if I did this, you know, 10 or 20 years ago. I would not have been ready because I didn't have ideas then. And I, and I, was, um, I was in a different place. So, so I was really, I was ready um, when, I, when I went. I think that's, that's an interesting idea that you, well, that's the word, a concept that you didn't have ideas I, or... I, they, you know, um, you know, I, I have I have a history of illustration, and um, you know, and my idea is probably based a lot in that, and just being literal. And that's one thing I had to sort of work out with my work was not being literal. Um, but I, I just didn't, you know. I mean, I did a lot of landscapes. You know, I, I didn't. The work wasn't very personal um, when I was, um, you know, when I was painting before. Um, you know, if you came to my home, you would see. What some people thought were great, beautiful landscapes, which I also like, and, and they were part of my, um, you know, I, I sort of feel like everything's abstract, and I see everything from an abstract perspective, and I, I'm always composing, and um, some of them are, I think, are really successful abstract-ish landscapes, but um, now my work is, is more personal, you know, is is really relates to my family um, history, and. Um, and what's happening in this in this country, um, and so that's I, I wasn't ready to say those things or or, or, or deal with those things then, and um, now I am. And also the you know the climate has changed a bit as well, so that's also part of it. So um, we we do have a question if if that is um, from someone who's watching if that is signaling a move away from illustration as a permanent kind of thing or just as a just for now this is what your focus is. Um, I think um, it's it definitely is a it's a um, it's a slide a move away. Um, I, I've always wanted I. I 
<clears throat> the voice and what I want to say, I can say in a different way, in a deeper way with the artwork that I'm doing versus a, a book. Um, and I, you know, I'm interested in exploring that. I've, um, and some of the things I'm interested in um, may not be for a children's audience. So yes, there's probably a, a slide away. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's the, there's always graphic novels, however. <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot of a lot of work. Graphic novels. <laughs> it's a lot. I mean, you're doing a lot, a lot, a lot of paintings, and again, it's, it's being sort of literal. You know, you're, you're sort of dealing with, you know, I mean, literally walking someone through uh, scenes, doing things. But I, I um, you know, I I've always wanted to paint. It was a fear I I had, like most people, you know. So here I was, this um this kid in my family who liked to draw, which no one knew what to do with. So I didn't get a lot, I got, no one said don't do it, but no one really sort of, no one put me in an art class and no one introduced me to this artist and no one took me to the art supply store and anything. So I basically wandered through this thing by myself. So you know, so going to art school was a big deal. You no, know, that's why are you going to art school? That, I can't make any money as an artist. I mean, no one does, makes money as an artist. So I felt the, a real pressure to be successful. And so I, I really worked hard to be successful because again, just that lack of support. And so when I was there, right, when I was a student at Pratt, I took as many painting classes as I did illustration classes. Um, so my favorite teachers were the painting teachers. And I just loved that going uh, at Pratt on, at that time, the third floor was the communication design program. And the fourth floor was a painting program. And something about the fourth floor Oh, I just loved it. You know, the smell, the look, everything about it. As soon as I graduated, I went to the Art Students League. And here is another place. It's just filled with painters and this atmosphere, painting. And I, um, so, so I always sort of wanted to do it, this fear, and I can't do it, you know. Uh, and from time to time, I try to find time to paint in between things, never really giving it its, due, its proper time. So, you know, um, finally, I just said to myself, you know, um, I'm going to do something sort of for me, something I've always wanted to do. I'm going to take this chance. Um, and I, um, I went back to school and loved it. Um, and now I'm really, really enjoying what I'm doing um, and the work that's coming from it. And I have so many ideas about paintings I want to do, exhibits I want to do. Um, and it's, it's all storytelling, you know, when you think about it. Um, my my wife and I, you know, she's written a lot of the books that I've I've done, and she's now going off in her direction, writing uh, middle grade books which, which are less illustrated, and so I'm probably I guess this is sort of my um, doing adult books but with pictures, and they're not really as literal, but they there's some of the subjects I want to deal with, um, which is you know. So, so my goal. So I sort of see it that way. It's, it's still storytelling. Yeah, yeah. I um, adult books with pictures. I think we, I think there's the adult books. Yeah, <laughs> maybe stay out of that section of the the bookstore. But, yeah. um, so when you were at Pratt, yeah. um, w did you have an opportunity to to do things? You know, to work with mixed media like collage, or when did that come into your work? And and what does it provide that that painting might not? I mean, you've talked a little bit about that, sure. but like a little bit more um, um, on that. Well, um, not, not really. I, I did a little collaging. I always liked collaging, but I, whenever you talk to a collage artist, at some point you're going to start telling you about their collection of paste, pieces of paper. And I'm, I'm not really a neat freak, but I don't know, like all those papers and you have to get categories. It's like, oh my, I don't want to deal with that. But um, it probably started with me doing books about quilts. And I would, at some point I took something, like I said before, and glued it down as, as a pattern. Well, as I started, it wasn't until I was in grad school where I'm working and I just thought that, you know, I wanted to bring something else in, another element in. And I love this sort of graphic feeling. And the paintings really do sort of bring together almost everything I'm interested in. 
So I, I'm interested in paint. So I, you know, so there's a paint part to it. I'm interested in graphic design. So there's always this sort of flat graphic quality to the, to the work. Um, so those sort of br um, bringing those things together was just almost natural. And that now I sort of um, look forward to it. What's, what most people probably don't know is uh, I've also started working with newspaper and that's glued down on top of the canvas before I paint anything. So it's, it's sort of um, like the shacks that um, a lot of sharecroppers would live in, they would decorate their homes with um, newspapers or magazine articles because they, for wallpaper, that served two purposes. It, it, it was a decorative element in the home, but it also sealed some of the cracks from the wind coming in to keep help keep them warmer. So I sort of see that in a way with my paintings. I sort of, I like starting off by just taking new paper, just randomly covering it and getting, just get these, just to get rid of the white space, so to speak. And then I start painting. And what, that's done, what that has done is the glue tightens the canvas and gives it this nice sort of quality that I really like, this hard quality. So it's not really um, bouncing. Um, you can't really press it anymore. It's, it really is rigid, more rigid. And so, and, and it also gets rid of the white space. And also I want some of that stuff to come through. Um, also, and once I start painting on it, so um, those are things that excite me, you know, um, and, and that's what I'm, I'm interested in. And, I, and the collaging just adds this sort of special element. I love the idea of recycling, you know, um, working with other artists or parts of another artist's sort of piece of artwork, bringing that into my artwork, um, a lot of that sort of stuff. So that, that's really a, some of the reasons why I collage. So I think that when you talk about recycling, I'm really th thrown back to the quilt idea, which mm -hmm. it, which is the recycling of of um, textiles. But thinking um, about that part of your story or the 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 story of your personal history, having thought about quilts and the the G's Bend quilters, and then your you know you talk about your past and your where you you're from, yeah. and um, this question from um, from someone who's watching right now is, it's really asking about um, the distinction you were making between being an illustrator and doing studio art now. Mm -hmm. And um, is asking, is it less a distinction between illustration and studio art than it is between professional and personal work? So if, if, that's, oh. if that makes sense to you, do you, what do you think that you've acquired you know, at this point in your life, that um, in your professional work that helps you in your personal work? Like, what did you get from the professional to move to personal? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of quote Kerry James Marshall here, which, which is always dangerous because if you stay around me long enough, I quote him way too often. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of never personal for me. It, it's, it's always about the art. And if you listen to him, turn on two of his videos and um, YouTube videos and listen to them, you hear him often talk about, it's never personal. Um, it, it's, it's very much about a business for him. And so I sort of kind of see it the same way. Um, you know, what I learned is the studio artwork doesn't have to be read so quickly. The illustration work has to be read so if you are a bus driver, you should be able to look at it and get a sense of what's happening there. Illustration, uh, studio artwork is more about, it's a dialogue between myself, between the artwork and the viewer. The people who go to the Met have some interest in art. They, they probably had art history in college. They like art, they, they go there for a reason. The people, a lot of people who don't go to museums because they don't have a connection to it. So you, you have to sort of bring something of yourself, some knowledge when you look at one of my pieces. It's, it's, it's harder if you have no real understanding of the art world. And that's kind of what I want. I want that sort of dialogue. Um, um, so when you come in, you, you see something, um, for example, the fact that I, most of my, my people are extremely dark skinned and some I, I try to, is, is, is black and, and then playing with this sort of black as a color. Well, that's connected to Kerry, it's connected to 
Um, Kara Walker is connected to so many other artists who have used black in their um, in their work. And that and what does that mean? And to understand why I'm sort of dealing with black, that's that to me is the difference between studio art and an illustration. Uh, and I'm not I I am not trying to make it easy for you to understand what I'm doing. Well, there are so many clues to me, but I, I think it's, it's not so literal where, you know, it's going to be protests and you're going to see a bunch of people holding signs. That's not what you're going to see in my artwork. If it, it, it I mean, protests can be said in so many other ways without being so direct, because I can take a picture and do that. And, and I, and I purposely try not to make art that, um, you know, hey, you can just find a photograph that match that. So that's interesting because I, um, as someone who studied art history and thinking about you saying that you're like looking for that dialogue and that you, you're you putting the clues that are clear in there to you, no. do you write about your work in a way that you want, like, that you also want to keep like hold some of the cards close to your chest or do you, when when you write does it all go out on the table i try not to bore anyone with this stuff because i could go on forever you know talking about this stuff and you know but as as um as much as i possibly can without losing it in the audience but um I, I, I like that sort of idea of the interesting layers you know there's a piece um in the gallery called um, Christ in Quilts. And when I, 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 that idea came about because I'm looking at these quilt patterns, I continuously see crosses. Oh, well, that's interesting. And you, you listen to interviews. Of, uh, you, I actually went down to G's Ben and met one of the um, two of the quilters. Religion is really important. You know, I, I come from a family, Baptist, you know, African-American family, you know, and church is really important. And so, in some ways, that's a, that's a, about my family. You know, I, the Christ is in your everything. It's not only it's in your life; it's in your art also. And so that's what that piece is sort of about. That that sort of large cross is there. Um, and I, you know, again, that's a dialogue that from knowing about the quoters and those things. You should, oh, well, ah, wow. Look at that! Is and the title. The title. The title should be a, a big, big clue also with um, helping um, you distinguish some of the things that um, about the pieces. So um, I'm going to ask you about the pieces behind you in a minute uh, oh, in sure. the studio, yeah. but um, the, we do have a question about what um, artists you think what have influenced you and kind of in the in a way that other black artists in particular is the question well um we want I'm, I'm not sure if we just well, uh, i'll give you some black artists um it's probably my two favorite which i already mentioned one is kerry james marshall probably my top favorite uh, another guy named by the name of henry taylor is also um a, a favorite of mine um but the list is is, is long um of, of african-american artists who you no know, obviously romare bearden is a is, a, is an influence, but you know, um, other artists, um, I'm a huge Rauschenberg fan, Robert Rauschenberg. I mean, I just, um, his work is just so incredible to me. Um, uh, Richard Diebenkorn is also um, one, of, one of my favorites. Um, Basquiat, um, love Basquiat, um, you know, just, it's just, um, I'm also, you have to um, remember, I'm just kind of like a um, art fanatic. I mean, I just love art. You know, and I, um, it goes sometimes beyond, um, but it does go beyond um, just two dimensional art is, you know, sculpting and things like that. I just, I just love it all um, so much. And museums are some of my favorite places to go to, um, as well as galleries. Um, I it, it was, I'm often impressed by the creativity of, um, of people. Um, that's, those are the things that sort of um, impress me probably more than anything is just how, um, and that's what's really great about museums and galleries. You, you see these artists who are moving forward and um, and um, the way they think is it, it, just truly interesting um, how they conceive things. So um, I, I think everyone's kind of got their, their list of like their top favorites and then the top that they borrow from. And um, I'm looking at, a, 
an image behind your head of uh, a portrait of a, a, I would love to know a little bit more about um, that, that right there. Okay. Yes. Um, let's actually, yeah, I'll unplug and we can go closer. I'm always so bad about this. I'm not sure. What, um, so these, this is what I'm currently working on. These are boxes. Um, I'm not, can you guys, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, there, I had these made. And this is um, currently what I'm working on. Um, and so you can turn these if I had two hands free and, you know, get different faces. And I haven't started, I'm so, this sort of, there's a torso and there's legs. And so um, here's some other ones. And so this is, these are really, and here actually, here's James Bowen. Here's James Bowen. These, oh, wow. are, these are roughly sketched and these are not finished. Um, so here we, you know, there's a reason why I was really attracted to this pink hoodie that he, that I put on this person. Um, I want that to sort of pop out, um, you know, a few years ago, um, someone was killed because he was wearing a hoodie. So there's a statement there. Um, you know, of course, Baldwin had just had to put Baldwin in for obvious reasons. And so that's um, this is what I'm currently working on. Um, and um, each part is making a statement, and you can rotate them around. So it's saying something about gender. Um, you know. Um, and the mixing of mixing of, of people, and um, that's that's my my next project. Um, I and seeing the piece at the Barrett Art Center was very interesting because there's a big cube there, <laughs> and that reminds me, like, wow. Okay, so we're still in the same vein. We're thinking the same way that me and this phot photographer. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about that, and I I I'm excited about even doing abstract versions of that, where a person could buy a set and you can rotate it and have a different configuration. And that's also what's great. You can change these and move these around. And it can always, it can be different because um, no part is actually attached. So no sort of locked in. So if you want to have, you know, this head with this torso with these legs, it can happen. So it's, that's the whole idea. Yeah, the, the the first thing that came to my mind, and someone commented about it, um, is it just reminds like a three D version of the exquisite corpse. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in in that way, and you're also bringing a a whole new level of uh, like creativity to the the collections person who's going to be um, installing the these works in a museum <laughs> or a gallery. Yeah. They get full kind of creative expression in which way that they decide to put them for the show yeah. or. Or you could say, you know, every week you have to re rotate on this special uh, special series of images together. But that's, a, so you, you would consider those as a commercial venture then, would you do that? Um, not that uh, studio art work, um, not really commercial. Um, it's, it's meant for um, exhibit um, and someone could to, to purchase, if someone wants to purchase them, uh, you know, a set. Um, I originally saw these, um, I was actually thinking they would be finished for the Barrett show. And so imagine in the Barrett show, we have the pieces on the wall and we have this audience who's looking at the pieces on the wall. So that to me is, is very interesting. Um, and then have then bringing in real people who are interacting and moving around them. Yes. And so now again, we give these layers, different people. Um, you know, at one point they were all sort of lined up in perspective and proportion. But then I, I thought, no, I don't want to do that because it, it really limited what I want to do because sometimes I want to bring the face up close, sometimes I want to bring the face back. Um, and it, I also um, was hoping to, these are also sort of more contemporary. So a lot of the work I do is sort of based in like historical things, but here I want to deal with people who are really current. And uh, the whole idea also is to bring the abstraction and the, and the figurative work together. So there's going to be some more abstraction in the faces. It's not going to be just sort of faces painted or bodies painted and abstract on the outside. It's going to actually be mixed together where there's um, 
things about uh, that are collaged on the faces as well. So that's a, a whole idea. Um, to really see it as one whole unit, um, the, the abstraction or the way I sort of approach making the artwork. Yeah, so the, the suggestion from someone who's with us uh, virtually is that that is your public art project for the subway stations oh. <laughs> is to install these as interactives for everyone. That's that's a great idea. That's a great idea. And I, I actually, I'm going to send it to them because of that. I never <laughs> thought about that. Yeah. yeah. And it would be really great. And so much people have talked to me since I've had these made is actually you can put little um, tracks in them so you can rotate them like a Rubik's cube. So imagine if it isn't a subway station and you turned it and people walking by could come in sort of spin and get their own combination and pose next to it, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. Oh, people would love that. That's yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds like, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, I think I, well, we have to get this collage and the next layer on it um, yeah. Yeah. For, for this. And I, I actually, when you're talking about um, this, this work and thinking about um, what people are reading into your work, when you, and having a message that you want to talk about. And have you experienced people reading your work wrong or? Um, that's possible. And, and that's, that's okay because you actually, part of it is what you bring to it. And I'll, I'll give you an, my primary example of that is a painting called Night John, which is in the, in the gallery at Barrett. Yeah. And so it's this, it's this real dominant, strong man, you know, and it's at night. And he's looking directly at you. I mean, almost challenging you. Well, I, I'm hoping that each viewer has their own sort of conclusion of, about this man. Um, is he confronting the KKK, or some other sort of group that's out to hurt him? Is he confronting a lover? Is that lover a man or is it a woman? No, I'm not saying either one. So I, I wanted to sort of be that way where you know, someone says, you know, um, oh, he's on the down low. Yeah, he's coming out at night sneaking around. Or someone else says, no, no, he um, he's on his way home from uh, from a, a ceremony. He's being stopped by these people who may harm him. So I, I sort of like that. Um, so there, um, I I'm sure there is some. I can't really envision some way how it could be wrong if you want to use that word but yeah. I want you to sort of bring things to it um, that you sort of um, you feel um, someone sent me a, um, um, a message today because uh, I, I posted this event and I used a piece um, of the woman with the quilt saying next to the quilt and this person is from the town that I'm from and she said oh you're you're painting our home and, and I never really thought about it that way um, in some ways she's right, in some ways she's not right, but that's her take and that's wonderful. Um, but and maybe I'm not aware of that. Um, so th there is another painting, which is not on exhibit there of basically laundry on the line. And that reminds me of North Carolina. Um, but, you know, that's my take on it, so, you know. I think, um... You just mentioned home, and and I I'm drawn back to Baldwin and thinking about what what makes some place feel welcoming and like it's home, um, and and like it's not home, and when you think about the Hudson Valley and New York and North Carolina, um, what I I guess just thinking about what feels like you're, you're not, that's kind of like home, but it's not home. Like you're, it seems like you're, you have this distance. Well, um, I think I understand the question. I'm not, not sure, but I'll answer it this way. Um, one of the things that um, attracted me and to the Hudson Valley was it reminded me of home, um, of, of North Carolina in a lot of ways. I especially say that when I moved to Rhinebeck because I lived in a small town in North Carolina where almost everyone knew everyone. And I now live here in a small town where a lot of people know each other. Um, so um, I, I, I grew up in a, again, a town so small, you can leave your bike out. Most people, you don't, you don't really lock your doors kind of, you know, and I sort of feel that way about here, you know, um, uh, leave my 
bike outside, you know, and, you know, here in um, Rhinebeck. And so, so that, that's what really attracted us to this area was that sort of small town, but yet metropolitan feeling. Um, so um, I have access, of course, to train ride into New York City. So, and I, I like those things. So um, and I've been living here now in New York State longer than I've lived anywhere. Um, so this really does feel like home. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to be here. I think this is a wonderful place. Um, uh, this, um, and one of the added pluses is the being so close to the museums and things in New York um, that, I, that I love so much. Great. Yeah, we're glad you're here. <laughs> you actually have a, a comment from someone who says hello as well. Um, Jeanette Peterson oh, yeah. Has, yeah. has a comment about novelists. She says that novelists say that they hear so many different interpretations of their novels that they never thought about ever. Mm -hmm. And so they put their novel out into the world and just kind of let it have a dialogue with the readers. And that sounds exactly like what you're you're doing with oh. stories and a wonderful smart person also has a Barrett connection she yes she's Barrett. an artist as well yes, artist as well yes my assistant for a, a long time um um actually that's probably my answer I have a chance to sort of make novels with my studio artwork versus um you know um a, a picture book and that's why I sort of enjoy it um and I, I do like the fact that people can read different things and have different interpretations so yeah she's right on with that yeah, yeah, I love it. So um, there's a qu another question that do you feel like your artwork has to, quote unquote, make a statement um, on a social or political level? Or can can your art for you just be aesthetically pleasing? Like, can you just well, do that? I, I think the, the, um, the place where I want to be is there's a statement being made. Um, um, and I, I think that that it can be expanded. Um, for example, if I say still life, I think most people would set, get one sort of, well, they would get a type of vision in their head. I say still life. I, I, I don't see why I can't do a still life that's pleasing, but yet also make a statement. And so those are some of the things that I'm interested in. Um, just recently, I got an idea about doing a, a building, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a city, not a cityscape, I guess it's a landscape with a building in it, you know, sort of really touching on um, Winslow, not Winslow Homer, um, Edward Hopper, sort of early, early, well, not his early work, but his, his sort of buildings and things, which had sort of feelings to them. Well, you know, not saying I'm going to do an Edward Hopper, but I think there's something that can be said in a by painting a building with a message to it. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing those types of things. And so maybe dealing with some things that maybe some studio artists haven't dealt with in a long time. Like, you know, I mean, you don't get a lot of people dealing with, you know, the still life. Amy Stillman, she did do some still lives. Um, recently, she did some when she was you know, doing the pandemic, which are interesting, but you just don't get a lot of that, um, you know, and you walk into galleries and, and um, I don't see why it can't be a possibility um, and still say something. I, I think I do want to say something to answer that question. I, rather than um, just pa paint a picture, um, I think, um, I, I, which, which to me, it just gives me an opportunity to challenge myself. And I think that's probably what I like mostly about studio art is you, you have an idea and you have to figure out how to make it work. Um, are you sort of, you, you put a challenge for yourself. You know, can I just do a painting with red? And then, you know, and, and you do a painting and it's all red and it works. And that's sort of your challenge um, as an artist. And I like sort of setting the bar for yourself and, 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 um, and, 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 and maybe accomplishing those things. Sometimes you don't. So those, that's actually a, something that I, a lot of people have talked about before um, that, that I've spoken with. I don't happen to practice art. So, um, but the idea of like the, these, 
the the pushing on on a pro you know a problem solve solving in yeah. that way and then not never getting there like with that like just that's, not being able to solve it and that yeah. that it has to be okay yeah but that's that's what gets you up in the morning it's in the studio you know you're trying to solve it you know i mean i'm looking at that piece behind you which is a wonderful still life behind you um <laughs> you know and so um maybe Maybe it takes three paintings, a few years, that struggle. But again, it's, it's that energy that you're sort of you're dealing with. If, if, um, when it's, sometimes when it's so easy, it's maybe not that exciting, but that's part of the challenge is, is, is that, you know, and that sort of um, that, gets, that motivation that gets you to create work. And I'm, that's what I'm probably thrilled about is the fact that, um, you know, to have this opportunity, you know, uh, I, um, it helps to have a good gallery that, su that supports you. And hopefully, um, fingers crossed, I'll, um, I'll, I'll find that. And then I'm really excited about just sort of producing and um, seeing what the reaction is from what I produce. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's, you're clearly excited about this work. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, this doesn't feel like work, work, you know? No, um, no, not, not, not at all. You know, and, you know, it's sort of like, um, in some ways, I opened this door in a candy store. You know, I've been in the candy store for a while, and it's like I opened, I found a new door, and, I it. <laughs> and there's these great artists in there, and the bar is high. I mean, really, we're talking. Okay, now you're in the big leagues, um, and and so okay, what do you have to offer? And I, you know, I have no visions of you know, of being top, but just to offer something, and to, you know, in my little way, just sort of you know, add something, you know, to it. Um, and it's, and it's great. The, um, the artists, I've visited a lot of artists in their studios. Um, Amy Sherrill welcomed me into her studio. Um, um, Deborah Roberts, um, her, her studio, um, some, some local artists as well. Um, so, you know, um, and to have these dialogues with them with, with um, it's just wonderful. And at the level they're working at, um, and to hopefully be able to make an image that sort of, you know, they say, you know, feel that you can made some contribution is, is wonderful. So then the, that's a, that's a lot of pressure to actually, to actually do the, the craftsmanship, the, the workmanship of it, but mm -hmm. also the ideas. So here's the question. Is there ever a shortage of ideas? I don't. Good ideas probably is very <laughs> <Good ideas. laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I do. I, I don't think there's shortage. I, I get ideas. I have a sketchbook uh, here in the studio. Um, and that's where my sort of initial ideas go. And I sort of live with them for a long period of time until okay. I can probably get to that painting, which usually means it's a, a, a six months to a year. And sometimes, you know, you go back to that book and you look through and go, oh, that's, a, that, that's, a, that's not a good idea. This, this is, oh, this is still a good idea. So, <laughs> um, that's what I do. I, I note yeah. them down and I, um, and, um, and I get a rough little, just little, is that something so I can remember my basic idea. And then I, I get to that, that point and I see if I can make it a piece of artwork and, you know, there'll be successful pieces and there'll be failures, which is all part of it. And yeah, but yeah. So for, on a practical note, what do you do with a work when it doesn't work? What do you do with that piece? Um, I have a few in the, in the, you know, in the storage area that, you know, just sort of you sit and you think about. And um, you hopefully, if you feel motivated, you go back to them. There's one piece that sort of comes to mind, which um, I, um, I, I, I think I have another idea for it to, to make it work. And, and, you know, sometimes you live with it. And sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes it, it, it may take three years. I mean, this is, um, the Cooney talks about, you know, working on pieces for years, you know, um, and that's, that's also part of it. Um, and maybe it never will be successful, but, um, um, I saw a video, um, with Helen Mosworth talking about Noah Davis's work. Okay. And there's this, I, this painting that he did that just absolutely blew you, blew me away. And you just sort of stop, you go, that's just such an amazing idea. I'll never get an idea at that level. Never, ever, ever. 
that's what you sort of try for. You know, you sort of get up and you put work in and you try, try, you know, and see what happens. So that's, you know, that's what, again, gets you back into the studio. But just hearing that was just really, really, um, really amazing. It was just how, you know, how he painted this picture. And it's a picture about his father who had passed away, but it's just a man sitting on a ledge holding a lantern. And that's, you know, looking back at his father and his history, it's just, just an incredible painting. Um, so, you know, that's that's what excites me. That's what that's what gets me going. Yeah. Well, and I think there's there's some actually some real practical knowledge you just shared about like getting a journal and like just keeping sketching and going back to it and revisiting yeah. it and and keeping that those pieces sometimes that you don't think are working. Um, you know, because we yeah. at Barrett we we have a community of artists who are you know actively working and trying to improve and or you know work on those things and it's it's good to hear that that um from someone who's you know facing those challenges yeah and um you know hearing about other artists also helps um challenge you but um the other thing i would say is sometimes you read things and discover things and you want to share them with people um there's something now sometimes lisa often Give, give me uh, ideas. And one of the paintings that Barry is about black writers. And that idea really came about because of her. And it's named black writers, but it's really about black creators of all types. Um, with this whole idea that you sort of locked in, you, you know, because you're African American, do you have to do work about African Americans? Um, who's doing that to who? Is it the public doing it? to you or is it you doing it to yourself and that's the question that sort of brought up with that painting um but um what i was going to say was you know she was doing research um, for a project and she just told me about um you know, in emmett till when they were looking for him they were digging around it was alabama i believe right alabama and they kept finding bodies from other people i mean it's like, oh my God, people have disappeared for years. They start finding, so that, that gave me an idea for something. Um, and you know, so those things you, you feel like, well, I, I, I just want, I want to remind people or have that discussion that that's what happened. And these people disappeared for years and never looked upon, but it was through his case, people started doing it and they found people. So it, it's, um, those types of things, which also you, you want to sort of, um, you know, deal with and, um, and create artwork about. So there's always something, you know. Yeah, so when, when these, what these works will say and in dialogue with what your next works say, I'm excited to kind of hear how they're talking to each other and maybe be, um, from different moving trains or not, um, which is an interesting idea of how how they're speaking to each other, um, this train metaphor, but and time. Yeah. And I, I am just really thankful for this time with you. And if there's anything else you'd like to share before we kind of wrap up for the evening, um, but this has just been a pleasure. I'm just, I, I, I could sit here for hours and just ask you questions. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad it's, um, you're interested. Um, no, I'm, no, I'm looking, um, I'm, you know, um, maybe over 10 years ago, I'll say, I started interviewing my family members about their lives. And now I'm interested in doing um, sort of an installation sort of around that. Um, so um, that's sort of the next thing after this, but uh, but there's, there's way too many ideas and hopefully, hopefully I have a lot of time to sort of um, complete them. So knock wood. <laughs> Yeah, I, for the right reasons, I hope you have tons of time in your studio. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> of your own volition. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for this. this is really All right, nice. this is the best studio visit ever and best talk. So thanks a lot. And thanks for everybody who joined us um, online virtually right now and whenever you're watching this because it'll be up on our website and it'll be on Facebook. So anyone will have access to this from now on. So. Cool. To everyone, thank you all. Have a good night. And um, I guess you guys are all going to go back to watching CNN now. So yeah. Yeah. have yeah. a good night, folks. <laughs>